and welcome to the Scrim versus uh, Team Unknown on the left and Boats and Holes on the right. We're going to have first band, first pick, first band from Boats and Holes. They're going to ban out the Ariel here. Top two healer, um, just her post 10 is just amazing. Mostly because of the fact that she has so much CC out from her whips as well as from her uh, Crystal Aegis. And even then, if she wants to go revive, just you, you can literally just put someone right back into a fight. So... Uh, really solid first ban, especially if you want to have, uh, <laughs> especially if you want to have like a specific, uh, you know, you can, you know, the other team will run something like a Vala Ariel or Grey Man Ariel who can just literally sit there and fill her up, her mana bar up, and then she just gets infinite healing that way. Sky Temple on the side of uh, Team Unknown, uh, you'd probably want to lean something like a Dahaka. Uh, that way, at least, Boats and Holes can't pick that up. This is a really strong pick, especially on the snap with where that... There, he is banned out exactly. Uh, just, he provides so much utility during a fight, especially as well as, you know, his mobility throughout the bushes now with the way that he just... NASCAR Dahaka. It's terrifying, so... Inside of Boats and Holes, we're going to see no a first pick Uther. Really important here because of the fact that he, I mean, even in when he's dead, still provides insanely good healing too. So if he's focused down in a team fight, I mean, he's still providing at least a few seconds of healing. But we're going to see the Genji and Uberak here, which is really good because you can have the stun into the Genji follow-up. Who's really Genji, I mean, he can just clean up a house, so... Um, out of boats and holes, we'll probably see an assassin tank, or at least a double tank pick, or a bruiser tank here. That way they can leave their last two picks as just, you know, whatever they want to run specifically for their comp. Um, but some sort of global here wouldn't be bad. Um, me personally, Falstead works really well here as well for the boss control he, he gets at post 10, as well as the shrine control with the mighty gust. And just his, his overall damage output is really good, and his rotations between mid and bottom uh, provide a decent order. amount of stacks for his AA build. But we're going to see Tassadar Arthas picked up here, which is actually really good, because having this this off-healer damage the Tassadar is terrifying. And even then, I mean, you don't have to go Archon. You can just go Force Wall and... The division you can set up with a force wall is really, really key. Especially, I mean, the roots that come out from Arthas as well as the stuns from Uther, and then you throw a, a force wall in between someone, and I can guarantee that they're going to die. But we're going to see the Vala ban here from Team Unknown. I'm curious to see as to why... I mean, I guess Vala works really well with Tassadar because of the way that she auto-attacks. Uh, we are going to see the Falsta ban out of Team... or Boats and Holes. Uh, pretty good ban here i don't think uh team unknown would go the bright wing but that's also a viable ban as well um just to get that global threat out of there but falsehood is it's just once you ban him out you get rid of the the ability for him to basically just have that boss control and that's the one critical thing where i mean that throw pit is definitely you know that can sway an entire game you can throw there post 16 you probably might be at least guaranteed Losing a keep. Uh, second round of picks from Team Unknown. Curious to see what they would go with here. They're definitely going to need their healer. Um, they still can go Brightwing, uh, but we are going to see Greymane. He does have that high burst single target damage, so getting onto that backline Tassadar would work really well, but he does have the dimensional shift, so... Um, but then you also see the the nice thing is you have this insane dive comp right now. Fight to my last breath. And I have a feeling this is a bloodless comp. Like 100% feel like this is a bloodless comp because they could easily just pick up a secondary healer, or like an off healer like a Taranda would work really, really well here for the uh, vision she provides as well as the uh, AO, you know AOE healer not AOE healing but just that spread healing that she gets so. Toronto would work really well on the side of Team Unknown, but for Boats and Holes, they definitely need their damage right here. So, Sky Temple, trying to think of what really works out. Lee Ming's always the good, hunt is My hatred but we are going to see Lunara Illidan, which, that's actually really interesting because you have the Lunara for the... Dots. You've got Arthas for and Uther for the stuns. You got Tassadar if he does go Force Wall for that split, and then just Illidan just gets sticky on that backline. And a, 
A good Illidan is, is terrifying on, on your backline because they just don't get away with anything. Still want to run show with Medic, right? I didn't see that message till just now. Um, they'd be terrifying still with Cho Cho'Gal with Medic. He just never dies. But you also then dedicate three people to one lane. Um, final pick here out of Team Unknown. I'd lean something into like a Sonya here. I think they have a lot of good damage. Sonya would work really well if this is a Bloodlust comp as well as the Wrath of the Berserker that she has, uh, so she can solo a lot of those camps. Uh, even Leap works really well just to get onto that backline. And But once again, they've got, on the side of Boats and Holes, they've got a pretty good overall the composition. But we are going to see Cassia here. With the blinds that she does provide to the Illidan, that really is important because with a team that's completely based around auto attack damage, well, not completely, but... Uh, with a team that has a lot of auto attackers, the Cassia provides a lot of good utility. Curious to see, but she does also work with that Bloodlust comp, so I'm interested to see. I don't know if they have... I don't know if the Anubarak and this high dive damage they have is going to work out extremely well, but let's find out. On the side of... Do I have my team set up right? I probably don't. I'm going to have to switch it over. I'm pretty sure I got it right. Uh, on the left, we're going to have Boats and Holes. We're going to have Rexbon Greymane. Uh, Caleb Reese on Rhaegar. Hedgy on Genji. Veteran Wings on Cassia. And um, Managic? I'll have to ask these guys. Uh, Magnet. Magnetic. Magthretic. I don't know. Uh, on a new brack on the side of Team Unknown, we're going to have Templar Hair. Kuna. Uh, Templar Hair on Lunara, Kuna on Tassadar, Sirius on Illidan, Kyric on Arthas, and Blazing Light on Uther. Overall, matchup-wise, uh, you'd probably see your Greymane in the top lane versus... Probably it's going to be Illidan. You'll you'll have your three-man comp with the Uther, Arthas mid, and then you run your Tassadar solo in bottom. I would prepare for your ceaseless battle. If you wish to live. Oh, really quickly, is. let's just take a peek at some of the first talents that are going to be picked up here. We are going to see the five-man mid. Uh, looks like everyone's posturing on the mini-map for that. Um, let's see if I can transition this. Hey, look at that. We can transition things. Uh, the temple opens in ten We are going to have Templars will out of Tassadar, so we are going to see him go for that, definitely that AA build. Five, um, four, Greymane looks like he's going to be standard two, cocktail build. One. Rhaegar's going Lightning Bond. Let your battle Nothing really begin. out of the ordinary. I, you can probably... Newbarian armor is going to be guaranteed. Yep, there it is. I, holding for that is ridiculous in my opinion. We're going to see a small skirmish up top, but it looks like uh, Boats and Holes are just going to go ahead and take that. Kyrak will be spotted in this bush, so we are just going to have Genji kind of using the shipping just to do that exactly. Um, we're going to see our Illidan just looking straight in the bottom. Castle goes in the top. Both of are going to try and get a pick here on Team Unknown, especially with this five-man mid, but we are going to see Greymane rotating into that bottom lane against that uh, Illidan, as I said, and we're going to see Cassia actually up against that Tassadar. So, this is going to work out pretty well, and then we're going to have our... I am missing. Oh, Rhaegar actually worked at the bottom, too. Just to see. I'm curious to see if he was going to get the pick on that uh, Illidan, but it looks like he's going to back off and play safe. Um, standard rotation. Nothing too special here. We're just going to see people kind of playing. And we are going to see a little bit of a lockdown onto that Lunara, but we're going to have Genji backing out of there. Not going to be an issue for him at all. Because of that Rhaegar chain healing, he won't have any problem uh, keeping his team up in the fight. Now, Illidan is in bottom, and we're going to have this two-man rotation, three-man rotation onto him. He will have to back up. He did see the rotation from us, so that's really sweet. Um, we're probably going to see Boats and Holes are going to clear bottom, clear mid, and then we're going to have them rotate onto this first shrine in mid. Uh, top lane, we're going to see Tassadar rotating into the Cassia. Looks like that won't be too bad of an issue. We are going to be having a small skirmish here on the midpoint. Odin is going to be still going against that like, gray main and bottom. Uh, looks like it's going to be an easy, even team fight right there. Um, we are going to see top still uncontested. Uh, mostly because there's just going to be that one that on Cassia, which she is pushed up. We'll be getting that, uh, free, or that temple for free. 
Mood Wreck just goes for the dive onto the Lunara. The Genji follow up. The healing from Uther does keep her alive though, and she backs away to the deal. Um, we are going to see that Bolton Holes will take over this uh, first, or this mid uh, temple. Or this will try, try and invade to cancel that out so that way there's no shots. Mood Wreck will dive in. He stun out the Arthas. He's going to get that. The Gust actually. The gust from the Temple Guardian does blow two of the members out of position, and it looks like the new Barian armor will just get him and the poison. Uh, the poison could kill him. And I'm assuming Rhaegar probably does not have a heal. It was on cooldowns there. Um, we are going to see that both of them will probably have to give this up. Genji will probably just try and get a couple more of his shurikens off just to get more of his questing done. But at this point, we are going to see overall. The Team Unknown are going to have most control over these uh, temples at this time. Um, we are going to see the Illidan matchup in bottom. Not really too much happening with that. We're going to see this small rotation. I thought they were going to get a pick onto that one. But it does look like... It looks like at this point, Boats and Holes are just going to be playing really safe by their towers. They're going to try and capture the last couple of these shots. It's not going to work out for Magnetic. He's going to have to back away, and we are and going to so see a rotation out of the, the teams. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised to see rotations out of the bottom at this point, mostly because of the fact that the next will temple will be in bottom lane, again. so you want to kind of focus on trying to have your team always ready for that. Uh, Rexbot and Hedgy are going to try and scout out this siege team, but the Wisp will come through, doesn't show them. They can jump on this at the last second, but it does not look like... No, they're actually waiting for the pick from them to come through the bushes. Does not work out too well for them, though. Arthas does have to come down for the protection into the bush. At this point, we're just going to see a standard rotation out of each team. Uh, Newbreak is going to go into mid for the for the, for the soak. Cassia will stay in top, and we're going to see these uh, two man in bottom. Rhaegar did go back to get more mana. Inside of Team Unknown at this point, Illidan will uh, does have his abilities at level 7 to go ahead and just get the solo this camp. So he's going to get that. And it's really smart of him because what that will do is when the bottom temple does pop, it will create top pressure where they have to respond or they just have to give up the free gate, uh, gate and tower and top. But we are going to see that Illidan is going to finish up that camp. Uh, looks like Nara is just going to be able to clear up this bottom camp. And Rhaegar is actually going to be soloing this camp himself. So what he's going to be doing is countering that other camp at the same time. And I think honestly... It was timed pretty good on the side. Actually, they're going to be holding this until the extra shrine is popped, which is actually really, really smart on their part because what that does is they can then clear this on their way down to the temple in the bottom lane. They can cap the point and easily just uh, rotate into the temple while uh, Team Unknown has to respond to that pressure. Uh, We're going to see Genji get poked around here a little bit, but it's not going to be affecting him too much. Uh, Rayman, as I said, as his rotation came through, he got that camp, which creates that top pressure. Um, Illidan will probably be delayed, and he'll just have to come down. He could potentially, though, if they do lane up a little bit, they could pick up their tens. He could pick up the hunt and just go straight from top to about about mid-ish. But there might be a quick pick on two. Nope. Rhaegar is going to just be in top, heckling the Illidan with the Cassia. It looks like they're just going to give up this temple all in all. They're going to go ahead and uh, push in the mid. And it looks like Tassadar is, yeah, Tassadar is going to have to defend this, and they're definitely not going to be able to handle that. Uh, they're going to guarantee get, they're going to get their lane sustained in mid, which is really, really strong. That way, uh, Team Unknown can't really stay there forever, or at least they can't get into a team fight and then walk back behind the gate, get healed, and come back. Um, we are going to see that Bolton Holes are going to be playing a safe game at this point because of the fact that Team Unknown does have their tens. We did see the hunt come out of Illidan. That force wall from Tazadar is really good, but Illidan he does hunt in onto the Grey Mane. There's significant damage going on to him. That sticky Illidan cannot be peeled off, and that oof, the force wall does come out of Tazadar. I think it was meant to block that Cassia from getting away. Looks like Rhaegar will be trying to get onto this Tazadar. Not today. <laughs> Force Wall does split them, but he still gets picked off here. Illidan is going to be... Ooh, three men onto Illidan with the Genji. I do not see him living. Lunara is out of position by herself, but she's going to be able to rotate by her uh, temp uh, into her lane. Arthas does come in for the flank. Gets too rooted. Uh, keeps their Lunara alive a little bit. But at this point, we are going to see... Bolts and Holes are going to be pushing back against Team Unknown. Team Unknown had a really strong... Uh, first phase of this map, but after the second phase when they just gave up that tower, really smart of them because they got a lot of the lane advantage that they needed. They took out the lane sustain for top mid, 
Um, so it kind of works out in my favor, especially because of the fact that another temple, uh, the next temple should be just random at this point. Um, you cannot predict after the second set. We are going to see nothing too much to the top. We see a small skirmish here in bottom. Illidan did hunt into the Genji. Lunara does get her Thornwood Vine onto him. There is the wrap onto the Illidan to help peel away from the Genji. We're going to see a small retreat out of both some holes here. They should be able to get out of this no problem. We're going to see a small camp picked up here on the side of Team Unknown. We're going to see this aggressive posturing back in from uh, Boats and Holes. They're going to be trying to really aggro a lot of these lanes, so that way they're going to push Team Unknown back into their towers. And it's really strong of them, because if you create this lane control and you keep pressure and pushing in, you're creating a lot of um, you're creating a lot of uh, lane pressure where your team has to respond to that, or they have to respond to objectives. So it becomes this this macro micro kind of fighting where you're fighting over the map, but you're also being so far pushed in that you can't fight an actual team fight. Um, we are going to see team unknown. Is they're going to put three men? They're actually going to leave their Illidan on bottom, and they're going to rotate back up into mid. Um, looks like Genji is going to be. Sp Nope. I thought he was going to be spotted out by the uh, Wisp. Looks like there is a small rotation change. Uh, Bolton Holes, they're going to be clearing this bottom lane. Lubrek does dive out and gives this freak uh, top tower, but he did, as you see at the bottom. Got about half the shots off, so we are going to see the Illidan getting collapsed upon, slowed from the Rhaegar. He gets chased behind his gate, and the Bolton Holes will take over the bottom tower. Uh, Team Unknown will be rotating into the Sanubrek. They do have the vision on him. Ilden does come in for the hunt. Uh, he's so sticky on these tanks, but Anubrek will be able to get away. We're going to see both and hold that are coming into the skirmish. There's a lockdown onto this Ilden. The Divine Shield comes up a web wrap as well. The boss is aggroed, and Ilden does fall. That web wrap really locking down their healer, and that's exactly what they needed to do here. Genji is going to get sticky onto that Uther, and we are going to see Lunara just barely getting away from this top skirmish. Uh, Uther does have to come into this team fight here to try and heal his team up just a little bit. We're going to see the blind coming out from Cassie, so they cannot get damage under the team. Meanwhile, Anubarak is positioning in bottom with his low health, but he's positioning to get a stun, and that's all they really need to do at this point. Uh, cooldowns are all active on the side of well, both teams, really. Less, less on Team Unknown, but... We're going to see the hearth coming out of Anubarak just to get back full. Genji will clean up this bottom camp. Er, he does have the ability to get out, but I'm just curious if he's going to be able to get... He does get the last couple shots. He's going to dash over the wall and get safely out. You have so at this point, looking at a couple of the talents, we are going to see to your mostly standardized builds. Gramian is about halfway through his Gilnan cocktail. A um, couple camps will be picked up here for both sides. Uh, Illidan will go ahead and just get this hard camp. Meanwhile, we're going to see the soft camp got from both some holes. And this hard camp over here is as well. Um, Genji's just about a third of the way through his Shuriken talent, so he sh once he gets that, the, the damage from him is insane. And looks like Uther's the only one who's really close to finishing out his talents, but we're going to see at the exact same time. <laughs> the two hard camps are gotten. We're going to see Lunara trying to get a little bit of damage here. We're going to see the dive from the Nuparak. The stun's on the Lunara. She is trying to get away. Arthas does get slowed down, but the horse wall, as we talked about beforehand, does come out, splits the... A new Brack. The cleanse does come out on him. Um, I think it was maybe to counter the poison. But this bottom camp, this uh, siege camp in bottom, does have to get responded to, which lets the boats and holes at this point they can clear up top. Uh, they can get a little bit more push out of there. Guarantee that fort. Um, definitely not much is going to be happening down here, though. In mid, we are going to see a small chase from Lunart just to get a little bit of poison onto that new Brack just to take a little his health down. And Baron Armor just comes right back up, though. As we did say, though, they Greymane did clear top. They guaranteed this top fort, which will push them just a little bit closer to 16. And at this point, Bolted Holes, they've got really good map control, and they can just rush to 16. And once they rush to 16, they can force a fight as long as the talent, they have the talent advantage, and they can definitely take the next map objective. Um, or boss. All right, this will get the double root out. Not, nothing to follow up, just the vision on them. We're going to see a double shrine phase here at this point. Um, Boats and Holes, what they're going to do is they're going to push out their bottom lane, but that does leave two of their members exposed in mid. And they could get collapsed upon by this Arthas. The Frost does come out and miss, so there's no root. Illidan does have the hunt, so he can come in at any point when he has does have vision. 
The Wisp will be able to see the rotation coming out of both these holes. Lunara will be getting a little bit of the damage out. And it looks like what we're going to have here is we're going to have Illidan just taking top. Kramin's going to stay. They're going to take the 4v5. They're going to collapse down into the Lunara in the back lane. The force wall comes out to split the team. Genji gets into that back lane with his Dragon Blade, and he seems to be swiping. The D-Shield does come out. Lunara doesn't seem to be falling. Genji so far. Tassadar gets the, the poison and the Tassadar damage. So close to the force wall does come from Tassadar to get the split onto the team. But the dive from Greymane and the Rhaegard seals the deal on their Lunara. And it looks like Arthas will be dying here too. Or uh, Uther too. And he does not have the heals to keep uh, one member against four alive. So what we're going to see here is, since there is a uh, minimum 14 seconds, we're going to see a rotation out of the uh, boats and holes, and they're going to take their boss, leaving the two camps still available, and uh, the two temples available. And what that allows them to do is they can get the boss, they push down this bottom lane, they can rotate into the mid and top. Once they do that, they can take the shrines for the temples, which will push the boats down even further. So strong play out of boats and holes. We're gonna see. We're gonna have to see how Team Unknown is gonna be responding to this. Because they do have their 16s at this point, so it is matched for team fighting. Now is the time that they definitely do have to take a fight, uh, especially since they were at that boss. They're gonna be a little bit lower on their mana bars, so they do have the slight advantage during a team fight. But at this point, with the, with the double temples. We are going to see Team Unknown having to make a decision here on which one they're going to want to go for. And it looks like we're going to see the hunt coming in from Illidan onto the Rhaegar, trying to get that stun and that damage. The force comes out from him leaving. Rhaegar is annihilated. Genji does finish his quest. But with that, Rhaegar dead. They do not have any special. They have no healing. They have to give up that uh, middle temple. But at the same time, boss is still pushing bottom. That's still a guaranteed gate. Tassadar does try and get a force wall onto Hedgy here. It does not work out for him. But at that point, we're going to see that's keeps to keeps for both teams. Nubrak does get out of here. They give up the temple. Looks like Team Unknown was trying to rotate in for just that last second pick to see if anyone was hearthing in the bushes. So at this point, Boats and Holes, what they can easily do is they can push for 20, not take a single team fight, and just... When 20 happens, they force a team fight, and that's how they get their win condition. Uh, team Unknown, they just really have to turtle up at this point. They have to lane, maybe try and find one or two picks here and there, but they definitely need to stay in groups of twos and threes, which is what they're doing. Um, Boats and Holes can confidently play the map openly like they are, where they're just putting their Cassie on top, mostly because of the fact that they do have the level of damage, as well as since they've been controlling the map so much, the Illidan to maybe hunt into this Cassia without seeing where any of the other team is currently is a little bit worrisome, so you're not going to see that hunt coming out. Um, he does get the camp at the last second, so he can clean up the top camp. Uh, we are going to see the rest of the team rotating into top lane just to play safe, but we are going to see a... Oh, it's not too sneaky because they got spotted by the minion wave. But we're just going to see exactly that. We're going to see Boats and Holes. They played the safe game. They got their 20s, and let's just take a quick peek. See Hunter, Hunt, Hunter Burbus, okay. Uh, we are going to see the Storm Shift with the Rhaegar, the Dragon Blade, and the Rewind. Actually, they went the Infinite Lightning Ball, okay. Interesting, interesting. That's really good, especially in a grouped up team fight like they've been getting into. Um, Greymane will be hearthing back here, probably to go ahead and clean top. Meanwhile, the rest of the team will rotate up. We're going to be clearing a couple of these lanes on the way. Genji will get the vision from the top uh, watchtower. And the said, Greymane will be clearing up that top lane. Uh, Illidan will just be cleaning up the bottom lane. He has the hunt, so he can easily just come straight in. But definitely, they can't really take this team fight because they do not have that 20 power spike. So at this point, all they can do is just turtle up. They can get a couple minion waves, hope they get close to 20. And it looks like they're just going to have to give up this this top temple. Uh, Lunara, we will see, trying to push up that wave as best as she can. We can see a small skirmish coming out here. I'm just curious to see what we're going to see. This Arcus is a little far on the bush, but it's looking like they are trying to bait, maybe with the, uh, just the single tassel out. But with Rhaegar just on the point, whittling down that last keep, uh, at this point, all Team Unknown can do is just really turtle up and definitely get the experience they need for that 20. 
Um, we are going to see down here. I'm curious. My the is up for another minute. So this point, the best thing that Wilton Wolves can do is they can just push up their waves and play the safe game. Um, now that Team Unknown does have their 20 advantage, they are on some footings. We are going to see the, I think it's Galloping a Galloping Game, actually, from Lunar. It does give her that extra uh, ability to get out of the team fight, but we are going to see the Prismatic Link from Kassadar. Interesting, and we're definitely going to see Redemption from Ethan. Alright, so Nubrak will be here in the bush. Just got off anyone rotates into the team. There's 36 seconds left on the boss. I'm curious to see if they're just posturing around here to see who goes on the boss first. We are just going to see that this, there seems like they're just waiting for that hard camp, or that soft camp. So we're going to clear out this bottom lane. Each, each team doesn't really want to take a team fight just yet. I think they're waiting for the next temple phase and trying to see if they can with the other team at that point. Um, we're going to see a bush from Hedgy. It looks like they're going to do, they're going to try and catch Team Unknown on their rotations up. The boss is up here, and I'm sure they know of that. As well as they know that that soft camp was just gotten too, so they can probably predict that most of their team is there since they're not showing on the map. And it looks like we're just everyone's just posturing, waiting for the other team to make show themselves. Or oh, and we're gonna see a small out from. I thought I heard Elegant's hunt. Uh, he's still going to be in top lane, just pushing out that lane. Definitely don't want to let that catapult through too easily. So we're going to see a top temple and a bottom temple here, which is going to be interesting to see how uh, boats and holes, if they're just going to go ahead and take the five man onto one temple. And then the people, if they're going to... Actually, they're going to see team fight coming out of them. Finally, we're going to see the ball of lightning jumping from teammate to teammate. The hunters come in onto that ray the deep shield has come out. We see the web wrap going on to the Uthu once again. The deep shield actually coming now onto the Illidan, who's really into that back line. Gets, gets melted by the Genji with the Dragon Bee Company, slicing through the entire team. And every time he hits, he just keeps extending the length of that ultimate. And he dashes through the, the gate, and with that... Ooh, do they get the Lunara? Rhaegar does get the healing, cancels out that poison from Lunara. The redemption does come from Uther, so he's right back. And with those two deaths, I'm going to guess we're going to see a boss coming up uh, bottom lane at this point. Lunara will scout it out with her Wisp. That's the best she can do at this point, so at least she just... Oh, she's going to throw out a thorn with vines. There's a potential that she could get picked off here. Rhaegar does use his D shield as well. The ball lightning does come out onto the Uther. He does not have redemption anymore. Uh, at this point, I think they're just trying to... And Uther gets picked off and talk about a staggered death. That is not good. He gets a little bit of healing onto Lunara. But what they did do here is they did buy a lot of time for their team. They canceled the boss because Lunara is poisoned. Um, there is no boss to push up that bottom lane. While Illidan can just clear out the... Ooh. What about those catapults, guys? Oh, wait, they're going to let their Arthas take care of that? And it looks like they're going to be rotating straight into this uh, bottom temple. There are a lot of low numbers inside of both and Holes. Lunara is by herself. She does get stunned out by the new Gets a little bit of poison on, but it... Illidan comes in at the last second. Just a little bit too late. Lunara already fell. He's trying to get that Rhaegar so low, but it does not work. He... I don't think he B-stepped, but... Uh, Tassadar does get the vision. The Psychonic Link does potentially, but we are going to see the GGs come out. GG, well played by both teams. All right. Well, the next lobby set up, I think they're doing another one. Uh, let's take a quick peek at some of the stats and talents. Greymane had 163,000 siege damage. Against that Lunaro, it's a 20,000 difference almost. That is just insane for siege damage. And that hero damage from Lunara, 72,000. Wow. Rhaegar healed for almost all of her damage, though. I will say that. All right. Well, we'll take a quick break. And in that meantime, we'll set up the next lobby. Hopefully, there's another game. Until then, I will see you guys. <laughs>
Alright, and welcome back. Yes, rip. I did not think to cast this live, mostly because I didn't want to give away the six strats. But next time, I will cast it live. Uh, we are going to see Tomb of, the Spider P Tomb of the Spider Queen picked up here. Um, I think it was picked by Team Unknown, which gives uh, Boats and Holes the first pick, first ban. So, Tomb of the Spider Queen, really interesting map because it is one of the smaller maps on the rotation for HGC. Um, it does provide some interesting um, comps as well as interesting rotations that you can see coming out of uh, both teams. Um, typically, like in very, very old meta, you'd see like a five-man rotation, you know, top, mid, bottom, rotate back, or, you know, rinse and repeat constantly. You just rotate during those time. If you rotate quick enough, we're going to see Genji ban right out, right out of the... Wait, they had Genji themselves. Why would they... I guess maybe Genji works really well here on this map. I don't know. Or maybe... Huh, maybe they wanted to force the Ariel ban so they can pick up the Haka? It's not a huge map, so globals aren't that much of a, like, uh... <laughs> Uther, Mouth, Tess, Rhaegar, Tyrande. I really hope they do an all-healer comp. I We did actually see, um... On one of the Gamers of the Storm weekends, they... some I think it was Meme Team? They did, like, a four-man healer comp with a Zarya, and then just they constantly pushed because there was nothing you could do against it. But what I was saying about the five main rotations is if you can rotate fast enough and you just clear um, and then you catch someone who's just a little bit too far forward thinking that you're in a different lane not watching the map, you can definitely get a couple picks in those rotations. And once you get a pick, you then just run into their gate and you just push down a gate because the rest of the team has to respond. And by that time, they're usually a little bit behind because of that five man rotations being so effective, uh, soaking lane to lane. Um, first pick here, though, for Boats and Holes. I'm curious to see what they'd be going with, though. Um, they're going to go no ahead man. and pick up Uther first pick. Overall, just, I mean, a insanely good healer. You can play him either way. You can play him strictly healing, or, you know, he also puts out a lot of damage, too, so you can play him with that, you know, Divine Storm. We are going to see Team Unknown. They are going to be picking up two heroes here. And I'm curious to see what they're going to be getting. I always lean personally like something like an Asmodan because it's just such a fun thing to have. But even then, like you can technically run TLV on this map. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and see two correct picks coming out of Team Unknown. They're going to go ahead and get the Grey Main and Nubrak. And it's really good because of the fact that you've got your, your, your dive burst damage dealer and you've got your dive tank so you pick up a couple of the dive heroes and we're actually going to see vala into tassadar which is a little scary um mostly because of the fact that the way that he heals with his with his um his shields as well as with the life leech and vala and her basic attacks uh just the healing she just lives through a lot of team fights i mean that was the whole thing where like new new tacitar and tracer was just such a hard thing to come by or at least hard to fight against too i mean it was hard to draft it because most people were banning out that comp um arthas will be banned out here probably actually extremely smart mostly because of the fact that uther has a stun vala has a stun if she does go f arena vengeance at 10 
Um, Tacito does have a force wall if he does to choose that at 10 as well. So the lockdown and isolation that you can get, um, and you throw an Arthas into that mix, is extremely strong. Nope. Yeah, I think that works really well as a band from Team Unknown. Definitely extremely useful for them. Um, on the side of Boats and Holes, I'm curious to see what they would actually be banning here. Um, probably isolating and limiting the, the healer pool is extremely strong. So banning out probably a Rhaegar here would be extremely good and crippling. Are we going murky? <laughs> or save last pick? I really hope they do go murky, though. Because it's always so entertaining to cast those matches. But instead of limiting the... Well, actually, Google Dan's an extremely good pick here for at least ban. Um, the wave clear that he provides during the uh, Spider Queen phase is extremely strong. And with the double pick coming out of Team Unknown, it's... You know, you can cripple their healer or you can cripple their wave clear. And the dots that he provides... I don't think Uther and Tassadar can really heal through that late game uh, damage over time that Google Dan provides. So strong ban out of uh, Boats and Holes here. I really kind of hope that they do pick hammer. Like, I just, I want to, I'm sure they're just trolling and they're just going to pick up the, the strong standardized comps. I don't think they have anything c weird coming out here. Um, definitely they're going to need to be picking up a healer and maybe an off tank. Like, a Sonya would be really good to lean against the Tassadar. Because um, you can just, you know, sit there and sustain and then you throw your Grey Man in top against Vala. And do your three on it. But the Hawk is actually going to be picked up here with the Rhaegar. And that's actually going to work out really well. Um, the Hawk doesn't get extremely good use on this map because of the fact that the lanes are so short with his global. But the way that he works now where he has that speed boost through the bushes and the speed boost that he gets from his, his level one talent that he standardized will take um, by mid game, I mean... He just, he can rotate through lanes faster than I think people who are mounted. And it's actually quite funny to watch. Last final pick on the side of Boats and Holes. I think they're going to need someone to lane against the Dahaka. Someone who lane pushes really well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Zagar coming out here. Um, as well as, you know, the creep that she has and the vision that she can provide with these short lanes and these map rotations work out really well. I'm just curious. I don't even know what they would pick up here. A Stitches into Sonia. So Sonia works really well here. And Stitches is just interesting to me. I mean, they do have the follow-up. Like, you can you can hook into Uther Stun, into Reign of Vengeance, into <laughs> Force Wall with the Sonya Leap. Like, you've got so much lockdown if that hook lands. So it's that's actually a pretty terrifying team. But on the other hand, you do have the stuns from Anubarak, the slows from Rhaegar, the tongue from Dahaka, and the high burst, the high single target uh, DPS from the Greymane. I mean, I wouldn't want to play against either of, the either of these teams. I'm just curious to see. The last pick, I personally would think that it would be, you want to have some sort of damage to there. I, I think the Lunara worked really well last time. And the Greymane into Lunara with the Dahaka stun, uh, the Tongues, and the Anubarak stuns too. I think the Lunara works really well here. As well as if she does get hooked, she does have that out from her, uh, you know, uh, trait of... But we are going to see Kyrkos here. He is really good at clearing lanes. I'm curious to see if he is going to go Convection. It'd be terrifying to be KT going Convection against a, a comp like this. Because just if you get hooked and you get Force Walled or any of those stuns come out onto you, I don't think you'll be finishing those stacks. But until then, everyone picked up their heroes. And we're going to be loading in. All right. 
And loading into Tomb of the Spider Queen, we are going to have Rexpa on Vala, Magnetic on Sonia, Calubris on Uther, Hedgy on Tassadar, Veteran Wings on Stitches. And on the right hand side, Team Unknown, we have Templar Hair on Greymane, Kayrick on Adubrak, Sirius on Dahaka, Blazing Light on Rhaegar, and Kuna on Kael'thas. Talking ma laning matchups here, we're definitely going to see uh, probably Greymane versus Sonya, Tassadar versus Dahaka, and then you're going to have your five, your three men in the mid. I wouldn't be too surprised though if we end up seeing some sort of four man rotation. Maybe um, there is that level one tissue regenerate. Actually, huh? He went tissue regeneration. He didn't actually go for the speed. That actually does work out really well, though, for him, because he does get that extra, uh, you know... Battle that begins in ten Let's seconds. get this over with. Five, uh, everything else looks four, like a standard build, except for three, Stitches. Two, I'm curious to see if we're going to go to the Slam Jam with Stitches. Let's the battle begin. And here we go, into the Tomb of the Spider Queen. Boats and Holes versus Team Unknown. Game number two. We are going to see a... What looks like it's going to be a bush flank from top lane. Boats and Holes does not know. <laughs> the spin of friendship does come from, out from Hedgy. I'm just waiting to see. It looks like Kuna's going to be rotating in safety with the metal spiders. And he's going to get that initial damage out. And if we are in, no, we're going to see people splitting off. Sonya will be rotating into that Ahaka solo. We're going to see a four-man rotation of the rest of the team. And this is what I was talking about, doing this four-man rotation. The Anubarak does get rolled in. He does get stuck. Oh, he gets almost half of his health gets just whittled away by that Vala damage. And this is what I was talking about, where they're going to rotate four-man, top and bottom, the top and mid. So it's experience, moving to top lane. Um, we did not see protection coming out. Small fight coming out, and Ubrek does get to dive into that back line. The stun does come out, some people are on the very main. But you guys just try to dive in and get a little bit more damage from Rex, but he is so low. But he's got a double healer on him. Uh, meanwhile, in bottom, we're just going to see the Sunny Dahaka matchup. Uh, overall, Dahaka probably will bully her a little bit harder, harder but late game Sonya is going to be very good for to deal with. Um, I don't think Dahaka is good actually. But I could be wrong. <laughs> These people are insanely good. Uh, we are going to see Rhaegar get pulled in here, but it stuns him out from a new break to buy him enough time to get away. KT is low here, he's going to have the heart back. Uh, we're going to see a ton come out of Sonya, but she's just going to be doing just fine by herself. Looks like Uther will be rotating a little bit slow here. Yeah, it's not going to be a problem. And this is where we're going to see the stagger of the rotation. We're going to see Tesla go up. Excuse me, I did not even see that. Uh, Sonya got pulled in by Dahaka, and it looks like they're going to be losing a couple gems there in bottom lane. And that is the one thing that Dahaka does provide. He is he's definitely hard to clean against. Uh, most of it is effectively his W, where he can just sit there and easily clear away, push it up, back off. We're going to see Stitches rotate into bottom lane to make up for that lost experience. Kiki is going to be able to get a combo off onto him. And this is where we can see now uh, Stitches is just going to have to soak in bottom against that Dahaka. So he is going to be rotating for a pick, potentially? Uh, here you can see this three, three mid, this double healer <laughs> Bala. I don't know if they can actually kill her. We are going to see Greyman get or uh, Dahaka get pushed into the bottom a little bit deep here. Sonya will be rotating up. Actually, she's going to be rotating into the bush, trying to get a pick on with Dahaka, trying to make him use his energy this time. Come out on two switches. Nothing crazy. Let's just take a look at the talent. What will come out on two new breaks? He's going to get able to get right out of that with his big. Haka does use his D is S's and he does get his life full back for that. We see KT just about a third of the way through his uh, questing talent in the same way. Uh, looks like everyone's just early stages of their questing talent. Uh, Sonya will be coming in here to try and delay that turn as much as she can. Uh, looks like we're gonna see a rotation out of the team for potentially a pick here. It does not look like that's gonna be happening. 
Where do you see Stitch's catch the Grey Man out of position? The lockdown does come on to him from Uther. The damage comes out from KG on to Tassadar, but it's not going to be enough. He's going to be able to use the key and get right out of there. And it looks like we're just going to see a little bit of a stalemate. The only one picked from Dahaka onto the Sonya in bottom lane early game. Other than that, uh, like we're on the side of Team Unknown because they didn't get that early game loss of them. They, they have lost the turn, but I think they're waiting to... He does get pulled in. The lockdown does come on. The Bala has so much damage, and he gets annihilated. And that that pushes the team... Uh, Boats and Holes up just a little bit further in experience. Dahaka almost gets the drag onto that Sonya, and she looks like she's been delaying him long enough to bottom him. He can't turn in those 27 gems that he's doing. Um, we are going to see... Boats and Holes does have enough for a turn in here, and if they do get it... They are kind of in the advantage. Their lanes are pushed up quite decently. Well, it gets a little bit of kick damage onto that. We're actually going to see in this bottom of this matchup. The dodge comes out from Sonya off that tongue. Raimi does get the dive onto this Uther, who is by himself in the practice from him. It's a healing on himself. Bala tries to get the damage out, but there is the chain bomb onto her. She is so low. He is also... Raimi does get a Gilnaeus cocktail out, and it looks like... There won't be any deaths at this point, but they're definitely whittling each other down very easily. We are going to see Boats and Holes do get the first turn in. Tassadar does get this Grave main, and all he can do is just walk right away and take no damage. And I apologize, I missed that completely. Sonya must have been trying to turn in and get away, but she got locked down by the uh, enemy team. So at this point, with the missing soak in bottom, Dahaka will get to be able to free push this back up. But it looks like both of them are not going to really care about that too much. They're going to try and get a pick. It does not work out. So it looks like they will be rotating up into the sun. They're trying to get a pick onto the Vala. She does back away just in time. The Blood Weaver does get so much push with that wave that they put back into the game. So we'll be rotating back into the hot and bottom lane. Hopefully she should play a little bit safer. But because of the strong push in top lane, Team Unknown has to respond to this, and that mid Web Weaver is going to guarantee that just got the, uh, he just got their well. And it looks like there is the hook onto the Rhaegar, but there's no follow-up. Dreaming is so low, so he cannot get the damage out that he needs to get. And it looks like Dahaka does come into the backline test, but see him with the vision. There is a game stun the tongue on the Vala. She is completely surrounded. She gets, dives forward on Templar Harris, trying to get the damage. Dreaming is down. KT does get a chain bomb on, which is going to spread to the rest of the team, but they do not care because they are cleaning house. 65 jumps on to Haka. He... Oh, Rhaegar, you're so close. Oh. This is so ridiculous. Meanwhile, by the way, all that was happening. Uh, Boats and Holes, they got their 10s. The Reign of Vengeance, the Wrath of Berserker, the Force Wall. Uther will probably see Divine Shield and Sixers. We're probably going to see Future Vile. Maybe Gorge. I would be kind of surprised to see Gorge, yeah. So Future Bile will come out. Uh, Uther probably is going to hold his. And we are going to see Divine Storm actually coming up from Uther. So I'm curious to see. I would have thought that if you were going Divine Storm, you would have gone into uh, Leap as well with Sonya. But with the talent advantage that they have, 11 to 9. Uh, I mean, 90 gems on the side of Team Unknown. And they're so close to turning in. The Boats and Holes is just doing a phenomenal job of just zoning them out. But this Uther is by himself. The Sonya is there. Sonya does get the tongue onto her. Uther does get a little bit of healing onto her. Sonya spins the wind to try and get out the force. does come out. Gets the rest of the team split. And Uther does miss his stun. Sonya does pop right off the Berserker. She's trying to get out. Great Man is diving onto her. But Uther gets the healing right onto her. Bala is now here for this team fight. The Pyro Bomb from KT is going to be just getting her down to half health, but what it does do is it gets her out. Divine Storm does come out on almost every member. The Ancestral barely connects, and I think it might have been a misclick because I think it went... Oh, Magnetic left the game. I think, uh, though, that uh, Ancestral must have been for the Grey Mane because he was... I, I, I saw it go off, but then it went onto the Anubrax, so... All right, well, we're already going back into the game. Pause break. Oh. All right, did not know I had to do that, sorry. 
All right, we are going to see that Dahaka. We're going to see Magnetic has joined, rejoined the game, but the, the hook does come out onto Dahaka. He does get away under the ground, but the force ball does come out. The unstoppable is onto him. He has 76 gems here. He's trying to get away. KT does fall. We are going to see Sonya spinning on the Nanubarak, and this is just going to be a strong push from Team, or from Boats and Holes. Team Unknown is going to have to back away here. Dahaka will dig top to try and get this turn in. He has 76 gems. He does not want to carry this around. But at the same time, Boats and Holes, if they turn in quicker, they will get it. And it looks like at the last second, Team Unknown does get their Dahaka to turn in all of his gems. With the gray main up, they have the potential to take a team fight. And if they can take it before team, uh, excuse me, before Boats and Holes has their 13s, that is the best chance for them. But the hook just barely misses Dahaka with his 42 gems. We are going to see exactly that. We're going to see Team Unknown is going to try and take this team fight before 13s. 13 did just pop on the side of Boats and Holes. They are pushing quite a bit. Sonya is in bottom, so this is a 5v4. They're going to play the safe gate game. They're definitely going to probably just lose this top gate. Mid will probably be pushed in just a little bit, but if they can get a counter kill onto this, they should be fine. Though on the side of Team Unknown, if they do get these late game structures, they're going to be catching up in levels very quickly. We're going to see a lot of poke damage coming out from both teams. We're going to see these... Ooh, drag just barely misses. KT does get the damage out, and it looks like the hook just right between everybody. And as I was saying, you're just gonna see this fort. Uh, you're just gonna see this, this front gate wall coming down. But we are gonna see the curse bullet just come out. Raymane is diving into the back line. The web wrap just come out. The pyro blast onto the Vala. She is full. She shouldn't take too much damage here. But the future battle from the stitches makes it so hard for this team. Oh my god, the deep line hook onto that Anubrak. He just barely gets out with a sliver of health. Is the poison gonna kill him? Oh my god, that Anubrak. He had no health. I don't know how he got out of that. But at the same time, they didn't lose any heroes. They got a couple forts, so it was really, really good. Remain will get those those late game cocktails. Cause uh, did he finish his build? Yep, he uh, excuse me, he finished his quest. And those late game cocktails, they do some damage to low uh, low health heroes, especially like a Vala who does not have a huge health. Um, but we are gonna see team uh, Bolton Holes. They are definitely gonna get their turn in here. So they do have this 13 advantage still. Force wall to separate a little bit here. Vala is rotating into the bottom lane. It looks like. Looks like we're going to see Boats and Holes will be pushing into this bottom lane. They want to get this fort. The hook just misses KT. And we are going to see the 5v5 here. Greyman does get that hook damage out with the Guinness cocktail. And I'm just waiting to see who dives in first. Who's going to get the first damage out? Zoning from Anubrek does really well. Keeps the Sonya in the back line. The hook does come out on the Anubrek. Nothing really, but Sonya comes in into that Greyman. The future bile is there, making it harder for them to rotate. But the curse bullet onto her. The cleanse onto the gray main and the web wrap onto the Vala. They're just wiping out. The D storm comes right out and they annihilate that Dahaka. The new break does come in. The force bolt does barricade them from getting out clean. Castor will pop his. KT does get the pyroblast onto the Vala, but once again, it does not get enough damage to kill her. Tassadar with those shields is just doing an amazing job. The friendly hook onto the Uther to keep him safe, and we are going to see a clean disengage from Boats and Holes. Meanwhile, in top and mid, as we, you know, as they force that fight, they're just getting a free fort, uh, I think a keep gate? Two keep gates and... Oh, a little bit of... Well, they're... Oh, no. I was going to say, I thought they were going to be rotating in for this. But it looks like they're going to be taking the aggressive camp. Wouldn't be too surprised to see a Nubarak does get the hook, the damage, the force wall. Oh my god. The burrow, and he barely makes it out because the poison. Greymane does try and get up onto that Rex buff, but it does not work. Sony does pop rather than work, she does have the ability to go siege that gate, but she's just gonna disengage. And she'll be she'll just be on a 50-second cooldown, but at least she had that if there was a team. The Haka here. Strong, strong laner. I'm curious to see if maybe we're gonna see him um, Post-20 with that Apex Predator, he should be able to push up these lanes a lot better, but you know, it's just hard for him at this point because they are just down two levels because of those Webweaver pushes and those picks. Sonya is just pushing into the bottom. 
the early game Dahaka picks were so critical and so good, but at this point, we're gonna see a boss fake? No, they're checking for boss, okay. They did rotate through Boats and Holes uh, meeting waves, so they do have an idea of where they are. Boats and Holes will also get their third turn in, I believe, for the game. Curious to see they're gonna be pairing this into bottom, trying to go for a keep guaranteed. Defend yourselves or perish. We are going to see actually a full scene of the stitches. I was curious to see. That's actually really surprising that you're running a, almost a double bruiser with the, with the way that you're running the stitches right now. But I mean, you, you don't really need to have uh, an extremely strong tank if you can just get those single picks. We are going to see the hook onto the Greymane. The Vala does get the damage out, and Greymane does fall here, but we are going to see that Kael'thas does get the damage out onto Vala. She will be healed right back out. The future Vala does come out, but the uh, web wrap onto him. The slow is onto the team. Are we going to get a hook? Are we going to get a deep hook? Nope. We are going to see the Haka getting kicked off here. Trying to get into that back line. Really trying to get that Vala, but they're just running such a protective top around her. And the force wall comes out. The hook just pulls in a dead body at this point. And I would not be surprised to see a core rush at this point. Five seconds on the Greyman. The death timers are still a little low, so he could get a crystal bullet onto some of these heroes. But they can just get that critical pick that they need to get onto one of the heroes. We are going to see the wreck dive in. The crystal bullet does go out onto the stitches. The healing is onto him. The crystal bullet does come out to separate the hook, does separate the tank from the team. And GG's are called. Wonderful match by both teams. Wonderful, wonderful match. Oops. I was going to look at some of the stat screens, but I hit the wrong button. So until then, I'm going to check and see if we have another game coming up. But until then, I will see you guys in the Nexus.